Well, good morning or good day to you. Uh, one of the great things you can do with the Psalms is just study the Psalms uh, in order to learn more about who God is, or in some cases, who Jesus is, as some of the Psalms speak directly about Christ. And Psalm 2, the second Psalm, is one of those uh, Psalms that speaks of Christ, and some of the verses of this psalm will be quoted in the New Testament as directly belonging to the Lord. So first I'd like to read this with you and I just want to notice a couple of things in here that we can notice about who is Jesus. So Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Now let's look back through this uh, and just notice a couple of things about this prophecy concerning Jesus. Notice at the beginning here in verses 1 and 2, the, the nations are raging, the people are plotting, and the kings of the earth are setting themselves, and the rulers are taking counsel against the Lord and against his anointed. Now, the Lord here, when it's all uppercase in your Bibles, most Bibles will still do this today, they translate um, what's called the Tetragrammaton, uh, Y-H-W-H. -H. This is how it shows up in the Hebrew. They'll translate it Lord, um, all uppercase, because the Hebrews uh, lost, lost the pronunciation for this word uh, because they never wanted to speak the name of God. And so they would uh, just put the name uh, of Lord in place of the Tetragrammaton. And so... Um, so today we, we sort of have the remnants of that as we translate it L-O-R-D, all uppercase. Um, a lot of folks today pronounce this Yahweh. Uh, a lot of older Bibles will have Jehovah, Yehovah, you know, kind of transliterating those letters. So Jehovah God, Yahweh God is the one who appeared to Moses at the burning bush, he introduced himself as, as I am, which is what Yahweh means, I am, and uh, he is the Lord who is, and the God who is. But now you'll see that he has his anointed, or his anointed one. This is the word Messiah. This is the word in the Greek becomes Christ, and it, is, it means anointed. And uh, they would anoint, in the Old Testament, they would anoint kings, they would anoint priests, they would anoint prophets, uh, but no, most notably kings, and we'll see that in this psalm. So his anointed, they're taking counsel against his anointed. They're wanting to break away from his anointed one. But God is going to laugh at them, and uh, he will speak to them in his wrath. So this is a mocking laughter, and he will have deep displeasure, and he will set my king. So his anointed and his king are connected here. 
Uh, he will set his king on his holy hill of Zion, which is Jerusalem. You will think of the throne of David when you think of this. And then he says down here in verse 7, the Lord has said to me, so now this is this this is the king speaking. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, "You are my son. Today I have begotten you." So we see here Jesus, the anointed one, is the son of God, the begotten one of God. And you will see that uh, God is saying to him, "Ask of me, and I will give of you give you the nations." For your inheritance, the ends of the earth for your possession. So he will he will own the nations, uh, <clears throat> all of the earth. Everything will be Christ's, the Anointed One's dominion, and he will break them with a rod of iron. Here I I see the idea of judge. God has given judgment to His Son. So. We can see a lot about his authority and his power and his purpose, his possession, all of this wrapped up in Psalm 2. Um, and I'll leave it to you to look at this last section and see what, how the nations ought to respond to the Son. God bless.